The, the issue of secession, I think, is a key issue. You know, there was, uh, I can't remember exactly who it was, it might have been Dan Smoot or someone like that, many years ago said that countries should be measured, there's all degrees of freedom, very free, less free, but he says you have to draw a line someplace. He says the countries that you shouldn't deal with are the countries that don't allow their people to leave. You know, and at that time it was very easy. The Soviets, you know, built walls around, and the Chinese wouldn't let their people leave, and there were walls around uh, uh, the Soviet Union. If you if you tried to get out, you would get shot. So obviously, uh, they weren't free. So in a way, in a relative sense, that's that's the principle we're dealing with. Uh, we're dealing with the idea of whether or not we as individuals can leave. We should be able to leave any time we want. You say, well, you can. If you want to move, you can, which is true. But more so every day, it, it's less likely that you can leave with all your money or send your money first. So there's already uh, limitations on our freedom of movement with our assets as well as uh, our, our, our persons. But uh, the, the issue of leaving is the key to whether or not we live in a free society. Now the issue of secession was, um, it was acknowledged by the founders. Jefferson just assumed. Most of the founders assumed that anybody who wanted to leave could leave. But uh, uh, then, then again, that attitude changed by the 1860s. Uh, now, the, in the uh, Hartford uh, co uh, Convention in 1814-815, in uh, they talked about serious uh, secession. Nobody questioned it legally. Nobody questioned the issue of secession uh, in 1814-1815 in, in this convention. But it was the Northern Yankee group, the Northeasterners, wanted to secede from the Union. It didn't come about, but it was never challenged intellectually, legally, or constitutionally whether or not they had the right to leave the, uh, leave the Union. And yet, uh, it was uh, uh, established by the time the Civil War broke out that it would be absolutely prohibited. One of the other major reasons why uh, the South was uh, uh, so aggravated uh, over, over what the North was doing had to do with the tariff. I'm convinced of that, and I think history bears, uh, bears this out. There are some estimates that, that say that at that time, since the federal government was living off the tariff, you know, that's when government was still very limited, and it may not be a bad way to finance a government, and we could do it uh, with the proper size tariff. But the whole, got, the whole government was financed by this abusive tariff which was biased against the South. The South was paying 90% of all the federal <coughs> revenues to the coffers. And uh, that obviously uh, was an issue. The issue of whether or not there was state sovereignty uh, was major. Uh, the issue of tariffs was very major. The issue of slavery also <laughs> was very important, but it was, it was now uh, declared at that time for the agitation, and at least for our history since then, said that that was the, the only issue. And uh, it, it uh, uh, could have been solved in other ways. Other countries solved it, and uh, it's just a tragedy that it did not happen. You know, a lot of bad ideas came out of that period. Uh, I, I think our country really, uh, well, we started to lose the Republic probably the day after it was established, you know, with the fights going on, the way the Constitution was imperfectly written. But at least through the 19th century, they did pretty well. And I would say that the Depression and the, and the wars through the 20th century just continual erosion of the principles of the Republic and in individual uh, liberty. But during the Civil War period, they sure introduced a lot of bad ideas. Uh, one of the worst, which had been rejected by all the previous uh, governments uh, and members of Congress up until that time, was the issue of the draft. Uh, but the draft was used to conscript uh, Northerners. Uh, they, they conscripted many, many thousands. But what is interesting are those who didn't get conscripted. Uh, of course, you could buy your way out of the draft at that time. But there's an estimate that during that war period, 200,000 Northern military people uh, deserted the army. 120,000 evaded the draft, 
and 90,000 went to Canada. Here, most of the thought the only people who ever went to Canada was during Vietnam. <laughs> but uh, they started it early on, and uh, this, uh, and there were some real, there were some court cases back then on the legality and constitutionality of the draft, and there were a lot of shenanigans that went, went on with the courts, while the courts, went, it was ruled unconstitutional, but through some uh, procedures, they were able to just uh, ignore it.